Dr. Ken Landa, let's talk about the shingles vaccine. Shingles, or herpes zoster, is a relatively common condition. It occurs in somewhere around 500,000 to a million people every year. You tend to get it only one time in your lifetime. Your lifetime risk is somewhere between around 20 and 30 percent. We know that the shingles, or reactivation of the chickenpox virus, comes in two basic forms. It comes in the skin form, and that's relatively localized, localized to the area controlled by one nerve, either the right side of your body or the left side of your body, not even both. And we know it tends to last for about three or four weeks, it tends to go away without any significant complications, maybe some scarring, but that's relatively unusual. We know it can cause pain, it can cause significant pain. The older you are, the greater the pain, the longer the lasting pain is, and we know it can cause some eye disease and some other kind of problems. post herpetic neuralgia, when the pain lasts for more than about 30 or 90 days, lasts, occurs in about 5% of people in their 50s, but that number increases to somewhere around 20 or 30, 35% of the people in their 80s. Originally, the Food and Drug Administration gave Merck Pharmaceuticals licensing approval in 2006 to market Zostavax. Well, unfortunately, the company immediately ran into marketing and supply issues that didn't get taken care of till about 2011, so they couldn't market it. They did have a study, and the study known as the Shingles Prevention Study showed that among people who were injected with either the vaccine or the placebo and followed for an average of about three years afterward, According to the company, there was major improvement. There was about a 50% reduction overall in the likelihood of developing the shingles. But if we look at 1,000 people, that 50% reduction really only means that among the people getting the placebo, about 11 of the 1,000 developed the shingles. And among the people receiving the vaccine, the number fell to a little more than five. So this 50% reduction is in a thousand people going from ten people down to five people. It doesn't sound very impressive, actually. If we look at people between the ages of 60 and 69 who received the vaccine, it was supposedly 65 percent effective. But again, out of a thousand people in the placebo group, there were about 11 people who developed the shingles. In the group receiving the vaccine, the number was about four. If we look at the people who were older, age 70 to 79, we find that the vaccine didn't even work as well. It only reduced the incidence by about 40 percent, going in the 1,000 people from 11 down to 7. And in people over age 80, it was only about 18 percent effective. Well, overall, if we look at the total study, 19,000 people got the vaccine, 19,000 people got the placebo, we find that among the people who got the placebo, about 3 to 3.5% three developed the shingles. Well, if we look at the people who received the vaccine, 1.5% developed the shingles. So this big 50% reduction is 50% going from 3.5% down to 1.5%, not very impressive at all. And even worse, the vaccine only lasts for about five years. So if we look at year one, it's statistically significant. There is a difference between the people getting the vaccine and the placebo. Year five, it's fallen from 62% protection down to 40% protection. After year five, no statistical significant a difference between the group getting the placebo and the vaccine. So the vaccine tends not to work for a very long period of time, and at the present time, there is no indication for a second vaccine. So you only get one vaccine in the course of your life, and it lasts for five years. And if you get it when you're relatively young, unfortunately, by the time you get to be relatively old, when you're going to get the shingles, you don't have any protection. post herpetic neuralgia, same sort of story. Relatively unusual overall. Supposedly there was a 40% reduction in the number of people, but that number is deceiving. So if we look overall at those thousands of people, we find that in the group that received the vaccine, fewer than 1% developed the shingles pain, or the post hepatic neuralgia. If we look at the people who received the placebo, again, smaller than 1%. So the protection against the post hepatic neuralgia well, if we look, year one, supposedly about 80 percent. Year two, year two was only about 70 percent. After that, year three, four, five, 
Mm -mm. No statistically significant improvement. Well, the company asked the Food and Drug Administration to consider licensing the drug for people between the ages of 50 and 59 bad idea according to the group that rates the vaccines, the ACIP. They looked at 2011 and 2013 and said, no, what are you talking about? One, it's too expensive. It would cost about $300,000 per quality adjusted life year that was improved by the vaccine. $300,000 for one person. And if they look at the duration of protection, if you get the vaccine at 50, then by 55 you're not protected and you're not supposed to get a second vaccine, vaccination, and the shingles occurs mostly in people who are 65, 70, and 75, or thereabout. So the study was done looking at people who were between the ages of 50 and 59, and again, the evidence isn't very impressive. The problem is that the vaccine is finicky. It comes frozen, has to be stored frozen. Once it's thawed out and reconstituted, it has to be either used or thrown out within 30 minutes. Otherwise, the vaccine is ineffective. So storage is a major problem. You can't go to the drugstore, buy it, and then go back to your doctor's office and get the vaccine. Uh-uh, that's going to take too long. You have to go to the drugstore and get the vaccine right there or go to a health clinic or go to the public health service. What we also know that if you happen to be taking the acyclovir or the Zovirax or if you're taking the valcyclovir, the Valtrex or the Famvir to prevent recurrence of herpes around the mouth, cold sore, herpes around the groin, genital herpes, well you got to stop it because remember this is a live vaccine. So you got to stop the pills at least a day before and for two weeks after you receive the vaccine. Vaccine's kind of expensive. It costs often in excess of $200 spotty insurance reimbursement, but there's good news on the horizon, and the good news on the horizon is that a competitor, GlaxoSmithKline, GSK, is probably going to be licensed to market their vaccine. It's not a live virus vaccine, it's not as finicky, and seems to work a heck of a lot better, works in about 97% of the people. So as far as the current marketing is concerned for Zostavax, doesn't seem very impressive to me. I haven't received the vaccine, and theoretically I'm in the appropriate age. Well, anyway, thanks for watching. I'm Dr. Ken Landau.